Welcome back to Bay's Bible. Today we are doing our third book review. But before we begin, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And please consider becoming a Patreon supporter so that we can continue offering high quality biblical studies on YouTube. Okay, so today's title I was really, really excited to review. The Apocalypse of John, a commentary by Francis J. Maloney. I was really, really excited to review this title because not only is it the latest and greatest in biblical studies, but it was a commentary on my favorite part of the Bible, the book of Revelation, or as I like to call it, the Apocalypse of St. John the Divine. But you may have often heard this book described as the book of Revelations, plural. But much like the Matrix movie, there was only ever one. There were never any others, there were never any sequels, there was only the one, and that is it. Or at least it's how it should have been. Now, growing up as a young evangelical, I was exposed to the book of Revelation actually fairly early on and in great detail through the Left Behind novels. I read some of the Left Behind novels, I saw the Kirk Cameron movies, I had timelines of the rapture, I knew the profile of the Antichrist, I can identify for you Gog and Magog. But as I continued in the world of biblical studies, and especially as I went to Scotland to do my master's degree on the book of Revelation, I came to have a great new love and appreciation for the book of Revelation as not just a cartoon of future apocalyptic predictions, but rather as about Jesus Christ. And I have a great deal of love and appreciation for this part of the Bible, making it actually my favorite part of the Bible. Now, as we've talked about in our previous commentary review on uh, Mark, on Warren Carter's Mark commentary, commentaries systematically go through a particular part of the Bible verse by verse in order to elaborate on its meaning. But commentaries are also dependent upon a particular hermeneutic that is an interpretive lens by which they are interpreting that particular part of the Bible. Well, for Francis J. Maloney's commentary, he uses primarily what is called a narrative hermeneutic, a narrative hermeneutic. And in Maloney's own words, this means that he allows the narrative to unfold word by word, verse by verse, and chapter by chapter. This means that I will only look back to what an implied reader has already encountered in the reading, listening experience to that point. Maloney is trying to interpret it as if you were encountering it for the first time. So the only information you have is the information you've already been given, and perhaps other biblical texts that the original audience might have already known. But as we will see, Maloney has a huge surprise for us. Francis J. Maloney is an Australian Catholic biblical scholar whose academic work has largely revolved around the Gospel of John and the Gospel of Mark, and he's actually considered one of the world's foremost authorities on the Gospel of John. But this particular work about the Book of Revelation was inspired by the Italian Catholic biblical scholar Corsini, who put out a paradigm-shifting work in 1983 called The Apocalypse, The Perennial Revelation of Jesus Christ. Corsini's central thesis, which is Maloney's own, and Maloney uh, follows on, he builds upon, and he kind of refines Corsini's original argument here. Corsini's original thesis is earth-shattering, if you're persuaded by it. Our usual entire paradigm for reading the book of Revelation in biblical studies or in the church is that it is written to a group of Christians who are being persecuted and oppressed underneath the Roman Empire toward the end of the first century, and that Revelation is essentially a prophecy about the second coming of Jesus to bring judgment upon the world and to usher in paradise. But for Corsini, as well as for Maloney in this work that we're reviewing here, this entire paradigm of reading the book of Revelation is wrong. For them, the book of Revelation is not about Jesus' second coming and judgment, but is rather about the salvation that has been made possible throughout all time 
by Christ's first coming in his death on the cross and in his resurrection. Okay, that's a huge, huge paradigm shift. And it means that Maloney has a lot to push up against. He is really fighting an uphill battle in advancing this thesis about the book Revelation. He's got a tough battle ahead of him. Now, while we can't exhaustively summarize uh, this work, what we can do is highlight some of the major themes in Maloney's commentary. So, as any casual reader of the book of Revelation will know, it is structured along four groups of seven. You have the seven letters to the seven churches, then you have the seven seals, then you have the seven trumpets, and then you have the seven bowls. It seems to be structured along four groups of sevens. So for Maloney, these sevens are not one after the other, but they are rather all about the same events, but taken from different angles. Second major theme in Maloney's work is that all those references in the book of Revelation that we usually take to be about Christian martyrs, those that have witnessed to the word of God, that were beheaded for the word of God, that testified to the Lamb, so forth, that these are not references to Christian martyrs, that is, martyrs that have died for Jesus Christ. They are rather references to those that were martyred during the period of Israelite history before the coming of Jesus. Witnessing, obeying the law of God, the Mosaic law, and testifying to Jesus in the prophets. So they held faithful to the messianic prophecies. Maloney actually digs into this a little bit when he comments upon Revelation chapter 6. Maloney writes, of those saints crying under the altar, that we should read it as an indication of all those saints of Israel who had lived by the law, the word of God, and who maintained their faith in the messianic promises of the prophets, the witness they had borne. The faith in the messianic promises made to Israel already makes these souls witnesses to Jesus. But the name of Jesus Christ is not used for their situation at this first mention of their role. So these Israelite martyrs that have died for the Mosaic law and for the messianic promises have in some way foreshadowed the death of Jesus Christ and they participate in it. Finally, the last major theme of Maloney's commentary is that Re Revelation makes a very unique contribution to Christian theology, which is found in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, which is that the lamb that was slaughtered before the foundation of the world. For Maloney, this is very important because Revelation is all about the salvation affected through all time because of Jesus' death on the cross. In fact, the, the Apocalypse's theology here is very similar to what we find in the letter to the Ephesians, that we were chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world. So for Maloney, this entire book of Revelation is about God's perennial plan to have redeemed humanity from sin and death by Jesus' death on the cross, and that this was the plan even before creation began, and that its effects took place you know, throughout time, even before Jesus' death on the cross. So, those are some of the major themes of Maloney's commentary, and thus Maloney reads the book of Revelation not as a sequel to the Christian Gospels, but rather as almost a prequel to the Christian Gospels, right? You can think of it this way. Uh, Monsters University, which in my opinion, my humble opinion, is the best prequel to any movie ever made. It is a fantastic prequel to the Monsters, Inc. Monsters University fills in a lot of history. It fills in a lot of story. It gives you a greater sense of the characters that you later meet in Monsters, Inc. This is the function of a prequel. And so for Maloney, the book Revelation is almost like a prequel in the sense that it, it, it interprets all of Israelite history, all of human history, as fulfilled in the death and resurrection of Jesus. Okay, so for our sandwiching technique, let me start off with a simple word of praise. 
Maloney, like Corsini before him, uh, and like as I did in my master's thesis, argued very, very strongly that the harlot of chapters 17 and 18 of the book of Revelation is not the city of Rome, but is in fact Jerusalem. And it was always comforting and nice to find other big name scholars that that uh, confirm what you think. So that was very first, I was a little biased toward the work because I knew that they argued that and I was like, yes, guys, I'm, I'm right there with you. That's awesome. Okay, so uh, I also uh, wanna praise Maloney a lot for having clearly done his homework. He has read all the necessary other commentaries and he is clearly very adept at the literature and he really goes in all in for his thesis. It, you get the feeling that Maloney knows that he's arguing something that's controversial, and yet he is willing to go all in for it. And I think that that's very admirable. Now, let me get to a couple simple words of critique. One is for it as a book, and the other is for the argument. So as a book, um, Baker Academic Press, this book could have used a couple of charts. So I think Maloney's overall thesis is most persuasive as a whole. It is most persuasive taken all together. So if you had charts illustrating how Maloney was tackling each of the groups of seven or concentric circles to kind of show the development of Maloney's argument, it would have helped the reader a lot to keep pace with Maloney's interpretation of the various groups of seven. But secondly, and this is not so much about it as a book, it is about Maloney's argument. I'm sorry to say that at the end of the day, I was simply not persuaded. That's my main difficulty with this book, is I was simply not persuaded of its main thesis. For me, the book seemed to depend far too much on very new, interesting arguments, but at too many points. It was like Fat Albert's underpants, uh, it, it, it required a great deal of stretching, okay? It required a great deal of stretching to make certain things fit. And also, it felt like it was a house of cards. It was very dependent upon each little step of the way, and one little move and the whole thing would have collapsed. So at the end of the day, I was just simply not persuaded by Maloney's thesis here, which is too bad because... It, it, on the one hand, it's kind of attractive because you don't need to be embarrassed to buy the book Revelation anymore. But at the end of the day, I just didn't, I just wasn't persuaded that its argument was correct. You know, Corsini, when he first came out with his volume in 1983, didn't have a lot of people follow him. And um, frankly, I can see why. Now, let me add with a final word of praise. A good commentary a good commentary should always get you to read the text closely again with new eyes. It had been a couple of years since I had had to read the book of Revelation this closely. Because Maloney's take was so new and original to me, it forced me to read the book of Revelation again very, very closely and to try to read it as he would read it. And if a commentary gets you to read the biblical text again with new eyes, new ears, and to pay close attention to the text, it's done its job. It's done a really, really good thing for you in your spiritual walk with Christ. So thanks again, Maloney. Well, that is us here for our book review. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Baker Academic Press that provided a copy of this work uh, with no expectations about how I would review it and no sponsorship or anything like that. A quick note for other viewers of mine, if you are not particularly inclined to academic reading, Liturgical Press, in partnership with uh, Baker Academic Press, put out a work called Reading Revelation at Easter Time which is also by Maloney. And it's an attempt to simplify and summarize uh, the book that we reviewed here for Roman Catholic faithful that read the book of Revelation during the Liturgy of the Hours in Eastertide. So if you're looking for a simple, more religiously devout uh, book about Revelation that reads it from Maloney's perspective, I highly recommend this title from Liturgical Press. 
Well, once again, thank you all for watching. Please be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and please consider becoming a Patreon subscriber so that we can continue doing this and really keep the ball rolling and hopefully do more book reviews and interviews in the future. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you here next time.